Hello again. Uh, all right, today I want to show you how I uh, code in C. So I do it a little bit differently than most people. Um, normally, I uh, what I do is I use a Jupyter notebook, which is normally for um, coding in Python. Um, but there's a lot of advantages in coding with a Jupyter notebook. So I just want to demonstrate um, how I do it. How you can basically use a uh, Jupyter notebook to code in really any language you want. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate how I do it real quick. You could also, if you know Python, you can um, also do a lot of unit testing with Python in C. And I'll, I'll show you how all that works. So first, uh, I have this file or this folder open just called YouTube Demonstrations. I'm just going to make a new file by clicking this button here. Um, and then we're going to make it, um, I guess, like C demonstration dot. Now, if you, if you want to make a Jupyter Notebook, it is an IPYNB file. So I click that, and for me it just opens, and that's because I have the Jupyter extension already installed. So you may not, by default, have this uh, these Jupyter um, extensions in VS Code. Um, so if not, you just uh, install, and if you don't know what VS Code is, um, I recommend just Googling it. Um, it's basically an IDE that allows you with a, allows you use a bunch of plugins, um, and you can code in a bunch of different languages. And one of the plugins I'm going to use is Jupyter. Um, so I have Jupyter, and then I think I also have a Python plugin as well. Um, but uh, they're called extensions in VS Code, and so you just need to install that. Um, it should be automatic, very straightforward. Um, and if you have any trouble, there's I'm sure there's lots of other YouTube videos that will explain how to install it. Um, but essentially what it is, is it's a Python kernel that runs, uh, it is like a, it's like a server almost that runs a Python interpreter uh, where you can send it code uh, in chunks instead of a whole program all at once. So I'll demonstrate it here. Um, you'll see just to orient you to what we have here, um, we've got, uh, we've got this, these are called cells, this little block. If I want to add one, um, I can add as many as I want. There's a little uh, button. You can plus code or you can plus and mark down. Um, I have a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that kind of help me do it a little bit faster. You can edit all the keyboard shortcuts you want. But for example, if I want to make this a markdown cell um, and then add a title, uh, I can do that. And then I can move it up there. And then, so this way you can, let's make this a little prettier, um, we'll call it C Demonstrations, there you go, and you can see it's like a little title, and you can close and open as well, so like let's say I had a couple cells down here, um, and they had information like Python code, for example, and this will run Python code, and if I want to make another one, uh, another markdown cell down here. Uh, I can make it like, let's say I want to do Python code, right? I can have some more cells. Um, and you can collapse them or make them bigger. And it makes it pretty easy to manage large amounts of uh, code in like a file, just all in one file basically, which is very, very cool. Um, I have the navigation. Uh, uh, the keyboard shortcuts are linked to, they're very similar to in Vim, if anyone uses Vim. So like I have J goes down, K goes up, I have H it collapses, uh, and then L opens up. Um, and then if you want to enter a line underneath, like in Vim, uh, you can just press O. So if anyone's interested, I can uh, show my, sheet, my keyboard shortcuts, but that's not really the point of this video. The point is uh, to show you how I code in C here, because normally what this is for is for Python code. So let's clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm just going to get rid of all these. And here I'm going to demonstrate just how we would like do a print statement. So basically you just type in whatever you want. Uh, we can do like that, just a basic hello world program. And now if I want to run this cell, I do control enter. And you can see at the bottom it says connecting to Python kernel, and then it's going to print to our terminal, but the terminal is really just right below the cell. 
Um, so if I, uh, let's see, if I want to do something else like for item in range, uh, I forget how this works, 10, I think, add a semicolon, there you go, you print it 10 times. Um, so you can use this to print to the terminal. And the reason that's so interesting for us is because in C, a lot of times your output goes to a terminal or file descriptor one or whatever it is your coding, uh, your you know, output is. Obviously in C you can make it anything, but if you're just learning and you're kind of prototyping a little bit, you might be putting out to the terminal a lot. Um, so this is useful for, uh, for doing that. Now you'll notice that right now we're just in Python um, and we want to be in C. So how do we change that? Well, the reason I like these notebooks so much is because they have this, uh, this super cool thing called uh, magic commands. So, for example, if I want to uh, write to a file, I do this percent percent file, and then I just indicate the path. So we'll make this C underscore program dot C. I'll put some text down here. So let's, let's, uh, Let's just do like, I don't know, just something easy, easy, uh, sample text. And now if I press uh, control enter, it runs the cell and it says writing program.c and you'll see on the left here, we have a new file called program.c. Now, if I want to change it, program or sample text changed, I just do, I change it in the cell and then I hit control enter and you'll see program.c has changed. So that's pretty cool. So like this, we're still in Python, but it runs the top command, and the top command just, all it does is it saves the contents below it. Right, so uh, let's do an actual C program, and we'll see it pop up in the C program.c. So first let's do like an include standard io.h, uh, and then we'll do int main uh, void, and then we'll do uh, printf. Um, yeah, just a basic hello world. How about that? Hello world. This is C. New line semicolon, and then we got to return zero. There we go. So now if I hit Control Enter, you'll see that C program dot C has changed. Super. However, this is still C source code, and we don't want that. We uh, we want to be able to test as well, um, so we need to compile it. So how would we do that? Well, we have uh, the percent percent file for saving files, and then we have this percent percent bash. And if you're in Linux, what that does uh, is it allows you to run commands like you're in a bash terminal. There's also, I think for Windows, there's percent percent uh, CMD, which allows you to do the exact same thing um, that I'm going to show you here. So with percent percent bash, what that means uh, is instead of like file where we just take all the contents below it and stick it in a file, what we're going to do here is we are going to take all the contents below it and run it through a bash terminal. So now I'm going to use bash commands. Let's do echo hi there. If I run it, hi there just like it's on a terminal, right? So what if we do something else like uh, GCC C program dot C. Uh, let's give it the G flag because I like adding G. We'll give it O for output and we'll call it C program. What will that do? Well, over here in our file explorer, we can see that now we have C program. Well, you can't edit it because it's a binary obviously, because we, but this is the compiled version of the C code that we wrote right here, right? Let's make another cell underneath it. We'll also run this as bash, um, and then we will just do dot slash C program. What's that gonna do? It's gonna run the, run the file. So the reason why this is so cool, in my opinion, is if you're doing something very complex in your C files, you can have the whole tree over here on the left, and then you can have the source code over here on the right, and then you can have your build commands in another cell right below, 
um, and you can you can have everything in one file that you can work together uh, where you can see everything. Um, if you edit something up here, let's say you want to add uh, printf, this is the second line, add a new line, semicolon, control enter to save. Then we do, um, you can also do shift enter by the way. So you have control enter, so let's you save the file. Shift enter runs the cell and moves the cursor to the next one. So if you do shift enter instead, you can do uh, run, 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 just by tapping enter. So for example, I'll do shift enter, shift enter, shift enter. And you can see it does execute, execute, execute. And we have them all in a line here. So we have our source code, save it, shift enter. Uh, we have our build command, we run it and it compiles. Uh, shift enter again, now we're running the program and we see the new output. So uh, I hope this is obvious to you how much faster this is than going into Vim or whatever your text editor, editing stuff, uh, and then going over to your terminal and then trying to remember all linking everything, running all your commands uh, to do everything, um, and then uh, running it, right? This is like, oh, I want to edit something. Um, yeah, we'll do another printf just because it's easy. Uh, here is something. Okay, let's test it. Bang. Done. Super fast. I love it. But you can do even more. So what if instead of uh, just just uh, running and saving files, what if we actually change the input? So let's use int argc and uh, what's the other one? char star star argv. Okay. Um, then we want to, let's just print whatever it is, All right? Let's just, I don't remember how to code in C now. Um, we're going to do while, let's add a iterator, int i, while i is less than argc, we are just going to, We're going to print um, a string followed by a new line that is our v of i. I believe that it should work. So we'll do that. We'll compile. And if we have any compile errors, by the way, we will get a return. Just like down here where we have hello world, this is c. We'll get a return, but you can tell it compiled correctly because we got this little green check mark and there's no compiler error afterwards. Okay, so now we have uh, argc and argv. I think if I just run this program, we're going to get, yeah, like nothing. Uh, oh, also, I forgot to, uh, this happens a lot. If you build an infinite loop, like I did here, where I didn't increment my i, uh, there's a little button up here that says interrupt. And so you can shut down your Python terminal, or your Python kernel, um, to interrupt your program. So let's add our iterator, just like that. Whoops. All right, we'll save it, and we'll compile it, and we'll run it. And you can see that i, when i is 0, we should indicate that i equals 0, by the way. When i is 0, the first uh, arg v, the first element in arg v is the name of the program itself, which is perfect. Now, what if we add something else? We can add 1, 2, 3, uh, four, five. Cool. Uh, so we changed our execute just like that, and now we can see this is argv of zero, argv of one, argv of two, argv of three. Um, let's actually, we can make that a little bit more obvious by doing um, argv of percent d colon, and then we'll have s over there. Our first one is just going to be i. There we go. You see, now we're printing argv of d. d is our incrementer, or our uh, uh, iterator. And then for the string that we're inputting here, we have argv of i. And then we're putting in the numbers from here. So that's great. Um, now, what if we didn't want to 
uh, for what if we wanted to add something else, right? What if we wanted to do like unit testing and we wanted to test a bunch of different values? Um, uh, we can we can use different arguments here. You know, we don't have to use one, two, three, four, five. Um, we can uh, we can use Python, for example, to iterate or to create a big list, and then we can push that list uh, to our uh, as our uh, command line arguments. Um, so let me. I'm just going to take a quick moment uh, to uh, build something. I'm going to cut the video. Uh, I'm just going to build something really quick, and I'll explain it in, in Python right after. All right. Um, I'm back. I what I ha what I went ahead and did is I grabbed a unit test program that I made in one of my school projects, and I just basically pasted it in here and changed a couple things so that I could show you how it works. Um, so the program has not changed at all, the RC program. But now down here I have a uh, some Python code, and then I have a uh, slightly modified Bash uh, Bash uh, cell. So I'll explain the Python code first. Um, what this stuff does is it uh, it imports iter tools, which is iterator tools, um, and uh, as IT. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build permutations of a set of numbers. So um, IT dot permutations, and then we give it a list of things that we want to include in our permutations. Now, just like before, I'm just going to add one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so what that's going to do is it creates uh, a an object, a permutations object uh, called perms, right? Then uh, with this is my open statement for the file. Uh, so with permutations dot text uh, in write mode as f, so f for file. What we're going to do is we're going to iterate over each item uh, in this permutations uh, object. And then we're going to just do a couple of little things to it. So first we have, um, we're going to save S as the item string. Because right now this permutations object, I believe, is a list of numbers. And we want it as a string. So we're going to turn it into a string. Then what we're going to do is we need, the string is going to have uh, an open parenthesis. We're just going to replace it with, a, with nothing. That's what this says. Uh, then we're going to take our close parenthesis and we're going to replace it with nothing. And then we're going to take all the commas in there and replace it with nothing. Um, and that way, what we're going to get then is just a number, a space, a number, a space, a number, a space. But it's going to be every permutation of 1 through 5. So what is a permutation? It's like every different combination of different orders that you can have. Um, and then we're going to write uh, S, which is our string, to our F file. Um, and then at the end of each item, we're going to add a new line. So let's, <clears throat> let's go ahead and run this. We get an output of to permutations.txt. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, and you can see that all we have is a gigantic list of numbers between 1 and 5. And the order for each line is it's in a different order. Right? Um, you might be wondering why why is that useful? Well, if our um, if our program, for example, does something specific with numbers, um, and we want to check that every single combination of orders of those numbers uh, is a valid input or doesn't crash the program, we can run a permutation uh, for all of it. If we want to test strings, for example, let's say I also wanted to um, replace uh, space with nothing, then I can put any characters in here. I can say A, and I might need to add the little things. So let's say we have an A character, let's say we have a plus character, um, and then we run that cell. Essentially what you can do is you can create every combination and every order, every possible order of everything that you put in to your program. Right, so let's say I was making a program that looked for, um, like, uh, for example, A2I, uh, ASCII to integer. We could take a, a string of characters, and it could be, um, it could have a plus sign or a negative sign, for example, in front, but not in the middle. And so I can make every permutation 
of numbers that has a plus sign in the middle, and it's not allowed to take uh, letters. So really the only value, valid ones would be the ones with a plus sign in front, and uh, then like 4, 5, 3, for example, and then maybe the A at the end, but it's the end of my number. So what I can do is I can take every combination that exists, all 125 for these five uh, characters, and I can run all of it through my C program that I just built up here. So with this little, uh, to get back to it, with this, uh, what this does is it creates permutations and saves it into a text file as we've seen and then what this little bit of bash does is we're going to do echo this is nothing to output text what that does is it creates a new file called output text if it doesn't already exist or if there's stuff already in output text it erases it all and replaces it with this nothing um, then we're going to cat permutations and pipe it to um, this while read line what that's going to do is every line that is it that is given to us from the cat program um, it's gonna save it as a variable called line and then uh, with this while loop we're gonna do our program the variable input or our arguments are gonna be line and then the we're gonna append the output of the program to output dot text and we're gonna do that for every single line that is in our permutations dot text let's go ahead and do that if we run that now we get an output file called output.txt and you can see that now we have uh, the output of every single of, it should be 120 outputs times, it looks like two because each one has two uh, two lines, so we got 240, 41, I'm not sure where the extra one came from, probably at the top yeah, we have a new line um, of all the inputs. Let's add a space back in by getting rid of this line so we redo the permutations. The permutations now have spaces. We go back over here. We run this program again. It's going to re-go through every single line in the permutations.txt. Um, and then if we look at the output.txt, you can see that now we have, and we've run the program with every uh, item in the permutation list in a different order every single time. And you can see our program is like, or our output is 721 lines long. So um, you can use this, this kind of general structure for, um, for testing a lot of things in C really fast. Let's say instead of just uh, the program, I wanted to run it all through Valgrind. And I wanted to add the Valgrind error uh, information to the output.txt. What's that going to do? Uh, this is probably going to take a long time because we're going to run Valgrind 120 times. Um, but you can, while that runs, before I show you the output, um, you can kind of see the, the use of this. You can keep adding. This is just the most basic I could think of. Um, but you can write whatever program you want, and maybe you have malloc and freeze and all sorts of like conditional statements and, and things like that. Um, and you can compile it very easily in this notebook and then you can generate variable uh, inputs and then test your program versus all those inputs using whatever bash commands you want as many times as you want to uh, you know obviously limiting your uh, your hardware so this took me 43.5 seconds um, to get the output let's look at the look at what the output file looks like scroll to the top I've got memcheck uh, our command was uh, C program A plus 354 and then we have that and then we get a heap summary uh, all heap blocks were freed and then we re-enter the mem check for a different program right so now instead of A plus 345 we have A plus 354 you see and then we do it again A plus 435 A plus 453 and we can check every single combination uh, now for this program is for it doesn't really matter but I don't know let's say we had um, uh, I mean you could think of anything really you could say if uh, if a two I I don't remember what library that's in or what um, a two I of R V of I is equal to I don't know, five, 
if we're going to uh, print f, this is a five, I don't know. Just throwing in some code here. I know this is probably not useful at all, but I'm sure you can think of, while you're programming anything, you can figure out something that's useful. Um, I think I need to add, was it standard lib? h for a2i okay we do that I'm not gonna do valgrind because <laughs> that's gonna take forever let's just see what we get here now we got output output is the same so oh we got five and then we printed this is a five and now we got a plus three five this is a five a plus four three five this is a five a plus four five this is a five three right so again you can use it to test whatever you want um, you don't have to do permutations you can do you can do anything honestly um, really the the crux of the video was to show you that uh, you can use these Jupyter notebooks to very quickly test and uh, prototype your C code um, or really, I think any language. It doesn't have to be C. You could do. I'm sure you could do this with C++ as well. Um, just by using this file and bash commands. There's other ones too. You can do time it. I have to remember how this works. I think it's like this. Time it. N1. Uh, I don't remember. L1? Maybe it's K. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Okay, and maybe it's R. There you go. So time it, bash, and then we run through all that. So it says uh, 48.4 milliseconds plus or minus 0 nanoseconds per loop. Now I told it uh, to N1, R1 means the number of runs and then uh, the number of loops per run. So it says uh, mean plus or minus standard deviation of one run and one loop each. So if you want to make this 10, now we got 60 milliseconds plus or minus 3.54 uh, milliseconds per loop. And we have 10 runs of one loop each. Right, so you can time your program too. So for example, for school, I made um, a printf, uh, I made printf, uh, you know, not the standard I.O. printf, but I made my own printf, and I needed to test it uh, speed-wise versus uh, the original printf. So what I did was I, uh, I ran a program, a C program, that used printf, uh, and then I ran another program that used my printf that I made, um, and I used time it on both of them, and I could see how fast each one was, and I could, I could uh, race them, basically, I, I suppose, where you can run both, you could see how long they take, um, you know, post compile, how long they take to actually uh, malloc everything and then free everything and do all the different, I mean, printf is actually quite complicated. Uh, so you could use it to test for timing. Um, I encourage you to just keep digging into it because it's, uh, this is a way that you can test your C programs or C++ uh, very thoroughly, you know probably better for small stuff than big stuff. I imagine if you had a really, really big program, maybe this isn't great. Uh, but for small stuff like this, this is this is wonderful for testing. Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to stop the video here. Um, if anyone out there is interested, I can add much more information. Um, but I thought that this would be a super cool uh, a way that I use Jupyter Notebooks um, to do C coding. Um, I thought someone might find this useful. So uh, that's all for now. Um, again, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to get to it. Okay, thanks. Bye.